Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Gold Mythic Easter Erica who is going to be the Easter event character coming to RTS. More info on the Easter event as it is published but visually we have had an actual Erica in the Mythic era already. She's in the War Store, a little bit of an underutilized character just because she was kind of superseded by other characters pretty much and i think she was kind of ignored unfortunately kind of cool character she's been a really big character in the past in rts the original was a winter character was pretty uh pretty well liked but we have a the, kind of like easter styled on the right hand side much more so on the left hand side we can see things in a lot more with detail she's got like the bunny rabbits on the arms the eggs on the cast uh, well, it's not, is it a cast? It's not really a cast. It's like bandages on her arm. Um, yeah, she looks really cool. Um, she looks really cool for an Easter character. And I, I like how, like, the the window frame behind her is all, like, decorated in Easter, like, you know, get up. It's kind of cool. If we look at the stats on this character, level 1,440, limit break 3. She has got 26,869 attack, 24,566 defense, and 25,333 HP. She is an alert character holding that pistol. She's going to be a medic role character. Of course, she's going to be a gold mythic, and she's going to be another character joining the Holiday Heroes Allegiance. Now, as we check out her adrenaline rush, we can see it's called Jugular Instinct. It's a recharge rate of 55 AP, so it means it would work on a defense team. Apply crosshairs for two turns and deal 400% damage to an enemy if they have less than 50% of their max HP. If that enemy has 50% or more of their max HP, deal only 800% damage instead. So it looks like it potentially will not apply crosshairs if they are over 50% of the uh, max HP. So it's more of like a finishing move to try and get someone to be decapped. The crosshairs will come in before the damage on the first half, as you see. So she will apply crosshairs, then take out the enemy, and that character should be decapped unless they resist the crosshairs or have some sort of resist in there, you know, on their kit when it comes to decap and so on and so forth. So looks pretty interesting there. Well, what we'll do is we'll do two separate attacks, one with the above 50% and one with below 50%. Okay, so first off, we're gonna do a character that is below 50%. We have got Molly here, who is much lower than 50% HP. We should hit her for 400%, but we should also apply crosshairs first. So we'll do the rush. You see the crosshairs is there. 400% hit comes in, and it is going to be a decapped character. Next up, we're going to do it where they're over 50% and see if the crosshairs still gets applied. So this time around, you can see Molly has over 50% of her max HP quite clearly. We are going to do the adrenaline rush here. It should hit for 800%, so it should do more damage but I could potentially not apply crosshairs, we'll see. It doesn't look like the crosshairs was applied, but it does significantly more damage. Remember, it is a deal damage rush. It cannot crit, cannot prop weapons on Erica's weapons or defensive weapons, just something to note. And this means, of course, that her being a medic will not affect anything you know, negatively when it comes to her damage output. It's not like this could have been boosted if she was a damage roll character because agility would not work with this rush. If we look at upgrades, you can see at grade 3, it gets HP requirements changed to 50%. But at grade 5, the AP cost gets reduced to 55. Normally, it's going to come down from 66 when that's the case. And at limit break 2, it gets plus 400% damage to an enemy with more than 50% HP. So... Up until limit break two, it's going to do 400% no matter what. And crosshairs will only be applied if they're less than 50%. But limit break two will go up to 800% damage. It's up to, you know, which one you think is better here. More damage or the application of crosshairs. If you have her in a team with someone else who can actually apply crosshairs, it's not too much of a big deal. Her doing big damage at any point is going to be good. But, um, you know, her being able to apply crosshairs is decent on characters that are less than... 50% of their max HP. This does not include bonus HP as well, just for, just to be clear. If someone's at like 100% bonus HP and 40% max HP, she should still apply the crosshairs and says their max HP. I don't think this rush is, you know, too amazing or too terrible at the same time. I see it as more of like a support rush, but can potentially do a little bit more damage. 
She is a leader, so she's going to be in the center, and she should get a lot of stacked damage with 1535s. Obviously, any attack bonuses on top. She's part of the Holiday Heroes, and there are characters out there that have pretty good boosts for Holiday Heroes too, so there is potential to get some pretty good damage boosts. So yeah, the rush is okay. It can be used on attack and defense, and her stats are very, very balanced. So at the moment, she can go on either team. Nothing swaying her one way or the other. We'll have to look at her signature move, passives, and her leader skill to determine where she would be better utilized. And first up on the other things to check will be her signature move. It is called Concentrated Strike. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one, cooldown of one turn, number of uses unlimited, three other holiday heroes, Allegiance, and one random teammate get focused for two turns, Deal 10% of this character's attack stat as main damage for each Holiday Heroes Allegiance teammate to a single enemy. So two halves to this. The first half when it comes to focus potentially could be all other teammates if she has got three Holiday Hero teammates. I don't think she can give the focus to herself. We will test this out. But one teammate is always going to receive focus even if they're not a Holiday Hero. The second half is dealing main damage and it's always going to deal 10% of this character's attack stat in main as a minimum because she is a holiday hero but then for every other holiday hero in the team it will add 10% on top. So potentially if you manage to build a full holiday hero squad she could be doing 50% of her attack stat in main damage off of turn 1. This bypasses bonus HP and obviously she is a leader. So you could potentially get her attacks to extremely high. And this does include attack bonuses on top. So you potentially could be doing, I think, without too much of a problem, 50 to 75,000 in terms of the, just a single hit main damage off of turn one. And like I said, bypasses bonus HP, hits the main HP. It doesn't matter how much defense a character's got. It could just one shot anybody. And you can just long press them to see how much HP they've got. You'll know the number in terms of the main damage that your Eric will generally do and you'll know who which character you can just focus off of turn one and get rid of okay so here we are off of turn one and i can just select a character use my signature move and i'll cause some main damage as you see seven thousand is going to be ten percent of my attack stat which is 70k right now i'm not the leader have not got you know surrounded by 1535s it can obviously be boosted but we also did give out focus to one other teammate, as you can see, Laura. But Erica herself did not get the focus, so she isn't included in that. It is other teammates. Erica cannot get the focus herself. But what happens if I just load up the team with four other Holiday Heroes characters? Okay, so this time I'm going to do the signature move. I'm going to do it on Alice. And we should be able to do a pretty boosted amount of damage, as you can see, 40,000. So it's not very hard to get a decent amount of main damage in here. And you can see my entire team now have focus. Three characters got it because they're holiday heroes. And then one other teammate will get it regardless if they're a holiday hero or not. This is actually pretty cool when it comes to all characters having focus. That means you can bypass human shields. You can not be confused. This sort of thing. Now obviously there are characters out there that give you disadvantages if you gain focus or can remove focus themselves so you've got to time this well you might not necessarily want to do it turn one but if you get her in the leader slot and you get her boosted up nice and high with her attack stat this main damage is going to be extremely extremely powerful and what we'll do when we go over erica's leader skill i'll just show the main damage that she can do when surrounded by 1535s in that leader slot off of base with no mods no sort of special weapon upgrade just maybe like a 40 percent weapon just so you get a good idea of the kind of base damage that she's going to be able to do if we look at the upgrades though on this signature move you can see at grade two it gets an upgrade where one random teammate gets focused for two turns at grade four it gets an upgrade where she deals five percent of her attack stat as main damage for each holiday hero allegiance team member to a single enemy at grade 5, limit break 1, you can see that she's going to get minus 1 to starting cooldown. So initially it's a turn 2 and it goes down to a turn 1. And then limit break 3, it gets a 5% main increase per holiday hero character on the team. Going up to 10% per character. Being a minimum of 10% because she is a holiday hero. The more holiday heroes you stack in, the more main damage she's going to be able to do. I think this signature move has the potential to be extremely good especially against these really tanky teams that are coming out 
where they have like negation of basic attack damage or you know hits that they take it's not going to account for main obviously main can be resisted this is worth noting so people can load up on main resist so you just need to pay attention to people's resist but if they don't have main resist you should be able to just do damage them straight away and the big bonus of course like i said it, it bypasses bonus hp but it also reduces bonus hp so let's say a character has a hundred thousand max hp and a hundred thousand bonus hp and you do 75,000 main damage to them, you reduce their max HP by 75,000, and because their max HP has been reduced, it also removes the 75,000 of bonus HP they already had, so effectively you're doing 150,000 damage in that case, and you'd only need to do 50,000 more damage to take them out with the bonus HP that they had remaining, instead of the 200,000 that you would have had to have done before. So not too bad indeed, and there aren't too many characters that can withstand that sort of heavy maim as well 50 60 70 thousand maim is pretty decent indeed but like i say i'll show you roughly the kind of numbers that you're going to get once we go over her leader skill but next we're going to move on to the passives and here they are here are easter erica's mythic abilities these are the passives she has got spirit because she's a medic she's not doing too much healing at the moment so maybe there's gonna be some healing in the rest of these passives you can see that she's got disruptive aura when this character performs their signature move, 100% chance a random enemy gets defense up block for two turns. This will stop the reapplication of things like 400% um, defense on Sebastian. It will also stop the reapplication of alert buffs at the beginning of turns, but it won't remove defense buffs that are already on a character. So if they already have a defense buff that lasts for, let's say, 10 turns, that's going to still remain for the next 10 turns but if it's one that reapplies at the beginning of every turn it'll be blocked when it's reapplied at the beginning of the next turn pretty simple stuff and the next one's called gunslinger weapons equipped to this character are 20 percent more likely to trigger their effects now generally speaking this is actually a pretty good upgrade on mythic abilities but she doesn't do any attacks on her rush or her signature move so this is only going to apply to basic attacks unless you have something that does it when she gets a takedown now the last passive is called group benefits when rushing a hundred percent chance all teammates heal for 20 percent of their max hp for each holiday hero allegiance teammate in the team which is actually kind of hilarious because if you did build that full five-man squad out you'd potentially heal all the teammates in the team for 100% of max HP just fully healing people. That is actually crazy. If you did potentially have a character that came out in the future as well that um, was an overheal 2 specialist on an attack team, or if you wanted to use an overheal 2 specialist, you could give bonus HP and that would just keep more survivability. This would obviously work when she's used on defense too, worth noting. I would say she seems to be a bit more of an attack character as it stands, but because her stats are quite balanced and there are characters out here that can boost alert characters up i think it's kyle um she's gonna have a bit better survivability than otherwise you know but it'll come down to her leader skill we'll see how that's gonna be but i'll just uh retest the uh, mythic abilities namely the rush just to see the heals come in basically okay so here we are going to use the adrenaline rush and what i should do is heal all teammates by 20 percent of their max hp because i've only got one holiday hero on the team and that is erica herself and that should proc davies overheal just to show that it happens regardless even if people are max hp and he'll just give a bit of bonus hp to everybody nothing too crazy but if people were low hp they'd be healed up a little it's not terrible some sustain is actually pretty decent especially considering she is much more offensive and like I said, she's going to work on attack or defense even with those passives, even though it does seem like it's leaning a little bit more towards attack. But um, yeah, at the moment, she could pretty much go on either attack or defense without too much of a problem. So if we look at the upgrades here on Easter Erica's passives, you can see at grade one, she's going to get the first upgrade, which is going to be Disruptive Aura. Which is when this character performs their signature move, 50% chance a random enemy gets defense up block for two turns. At grade 2, she's going to get the first half of Spirit. 10% of all the healing she is, performs will be also granted as bonus HP. This is only going to work on the other passive. We will talk about that a little bit later. At grade 3, she's going to get the second half of Disruptive Aura. 
making a 100% chance a random enemy gets defense up block for two turns when she performs her signature move. When we go on to the next one, it's the first half of Gunslinger. Weapons equipped to this character are 10% more likely to trigger their effects. At grade 5, it's the first half of Group Benefits. When rushing, 50% chance all teammates heal for 20% of their max HP for each Holiday Heroes teammate in a team. When we move on to Limit Break, she gets the second half of Spirit, making it 20% of all healing performed by this character also granted as HP. When it coincides with the heal that she does, which is the only heal she does, which is Group Benefits, she's going to give the bonus HP based on the actual healing she applies. So if she heals someone for 10,000, it would obviously do 2,000 bonus HP. But if she was to heal for 10,000, but they were max HP, they would receive nothing. It's based on how much healing is actually applied. Now, Limit Break 2, she gets the second half of Gunslinger, making a 20% more effective that she will you know, trigger weapon effects. And this is things that say percentage chance to occur, be it like revive weapons, stuff like this, or weapons that say better chance, or weapons that say um, like greater chance. It, this will mainly only work on defensive weapons. So if, she, for instance, she had a 60% chance to stun an enemy when being attacked weapon, it would actually go up to 80%. So this kind of increases her, maybe her viability on defense, even though her stats are not that amazing, but she could potentially be used on defense just because of the like increased chance to proc this. And lastly, she has got a Limit Break 3, the second half of Group Benefits, where when rushing, 100% chance, all teammates heal for 20% of their max HP for each Holiday Hero Allegiance team. And this, of course, would proc bonus HP based on any healing it does with Spirit. And that's the only healing she does as a medic. It's maybe a little bit strange, but we have seen worse medics, honestly. My, my thoughts go all the way back to Garrett, who didn't get any bonuses from Spirit, so it can definitely be worse. Um, but she's an attacking medic, if we saw how she was on her original. She was also a medic there, and I don't think she did crazy amounts of healing. Um, I think all the Erica's have pretty much been like medics or in that kind of you know vein, but um, I like this one pretty nice. Uh, like I say, it's mainly attack team, but it has some viability for a defense team, what we've seen so far. Now the leader skill will push it a bit more heavily towards the attack team, but you don't necessarily have to use her for a leader. It's completely up to you. And here is that leader skill. It's all holiday heroes get 50% attack. All other teammates get 35% attack instead. So it's pretty basic, but it's a massive boost for holiday heroes. And this, of course, includes Erica, who is going to be able to do quite a heavy first turn signature move. I'm going to put on a team with all holiday heroes. So just to see the kind of base damage that she could potentially do. But there are some pretty heavy hitting holiday heroes out there there's the likes of um easter eva for instance she hits pretty hard this is going to help her quite a lot there are also characters that boost for instance carl gives a 60 percent attack buff for the first few turns and that will stack with this leader skill of course and that will obviously be able to enhance easter era signature move i won't use that in the test you can kind of just see that as being bonus damage if you decide to put that team together but um, yeah, this leader skill is pretty good. You know, the 50% attack is the same as Trader's attack skill, basically, which he gives to um, NWO. So yeah, pretty decent. Okay, so we'll use pretty much the same team that we did before, but we'll just swap the locations of Erica and Herschel. Now she's the leader. Her attack stat goes up quite a bit more. She's surrounded by 1535s as well, so that boosts it even further. She has got over 100,000 attack. I think it's 120k. And this definitely could get higher if you had Carl on the team. Or if you had other characters that boost attack. For instance, Dale, for each strong character, can give bonus attack, you know. Um, if I do my signature move now, it does a 60,000 hit. This is pretty much as bad as it's going to be. The weapons are 45% attack weapons, so it's nothing too crazy. You can easily get higher than that. This is going to be much more powerful much much more powerful and just from doing the signature move this time around it looks like the focus can land on her from her own signature move it didn't land on her when i was testing it before but this is the first time it did so it potentially can land on her but there might be a little bit of rng involved i'm not 100 certain there but that's actually kind of cool too 
So it looks like the leader skill should be doing 60,000 damage and up if you use her in a full Holiday Heroes team. And I think, you know, that's a viable thing to do. There are quite a lot of decent Holiday Heroes out there, so it's definitely not something that can't be done. Um, and there are quite a few more recently released ones as well, so they're going to be a bit more uh, up to date with uh, the current metas and so on and so forth. I like the leader skill. Works with her kit. It does kind of push her more towards the attack teams, but like I said, you don't necessarily have to use her as a leader. You could have her as a support character. She won't have a specialist, but she will get a bonus to weapon procs, and she's got some pretty decent stuff in her kit otherwise. And there are some holiday heroes, of course, that work on defense teams, and that would boost that damage as well. The only downside is that it's based off of her attack stat, so you might want to boost her attack up and on a defense team that isn't generally good for survivability. Probably more of a better attack team option, if I'm honest. But who knows? We'll have to see what happens. And like I was mentioning, she doesn't have an attached weapon. This is more problematic on an attack team because there aren't too many things that proc. It's, it reminds me of like the gentleman situation where he didn't actually deal any attacks and he didn't have any weapons that could take advantage of that, unfortunately. It is the way it is, but if you had a weapon for alerts that actually had a chance to proc something when getting a takedown, it would work very nicely. I think they should actually invent that for every single trait because if that existed, those characters would be a bit more viable and maybe a bit more attractive to most people when it comes to picking them up. But as it stands, not much works for Erika when it comes to that third slot, unfortunately. So that was just a little first look at Easter Erika. Like I said, she's going to be part of the, the Easter event that's going to be coming to RTS be interesting to see how that's gonna pan out i think erica is actually a pretty decent leader and kind of fills the gap honestly as much as there have been a couple of attack leaders for the holiday heroes they didn't really pack enough of a punch when it came to boosting the damage of holiday heroes or doing something specifically for holiday heroes this character is 50 percent attack to holiday heroes is a lot and in the focus as well heavy off of turn one is really really powerful too so yeah so pretty decent potential here maybe a holiday hero attack team that you could put together in the future and i want to see how much main damage we can get on that signature move i'm thinking with that 60 percent attack buff from uh, carl it's going to be pretty nice indeed one shotting at any pretty much any character on a defense team would be actually kind of nice especially with the the likes of these davy teams popping up i want to get rid of those characters quickly if i can but do tell me your thoughts on Gold Mythic Easter Erica in the comments down below. Where do you kind of see yourself using her? Would it be on attack or defense or both? That is the end of my video. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving. <laughs>